Hello, everyone. We're back. Now it's the the finish line is near. We've uh, collected a lot of uh, pairings along the way. Uh, we collected a bunch of pairings, uh, the Vey pairing, the Coomer pairing, and then uh, Hilbert's theorem 90 together gave us this bilinear pairing we defined last time uh, that it goes from E mod M uh, cross torsion elements into uh, classes modulo M in a field K. And the, the pairing is non-degenerate on the left. That means that you have an injection of E mod M into Homs uh, of, uh, from torsion to mod classes modulo uh, M. And this is in the, in the setting where we are assuming that um, the M torsion is defined over K. Great. But not only that, it gives us that the image is in this KSM, which is a finite group. KSM is classes that give you unramified extensions outside S. And for that, it just, it tells you what primes might divide the representatives of the classes. And, um, and moreover, the pairing is computable in that there is a congruence with that polynomial F that came that function f that came from the V pairing, so that f is related to the to the V pairing over there. Okay, so we put all this together in a much more concrete way in what we call a complete two descent. So if you have an elliptic curve with full two torsion defined over over k over k, uh, such as this elliptic curve, then we put it all together in that. The key is that you get an injective hum from E mod two into KS two cross KS two, precisely given by these formulas. And it, again, I emphasize that this is an injective homomorphism. So whenever we know things in the image, two things that are in the image, the product of the two are also in the image. And if one is in the image, but another one is not in the image, their product cannot be in the image and so on. So you can deduce things like that. So um, we are interested actually in the other direction going from here to here. Basically, we can compute this and typically we do not know the more the weak Mordell Vey group and we're trying to compute the weak Mordell Vey group. So what we are going to do is go through pairs and see if they come from an elliptic curve. And for that, the theorem also tells us, the descent also tells us how to do that. If a point comes, if a if a pair comes from a point, then the point is a solution of this what we call a homogeneous uh, uh, space, and this homogeneous space, uh, it, it, so the point is going to give us a solution to this homogeneous space. So we can look for pairs b1, b2 where this has solutions. Okay, so we are going to uh, work this all out. In one concrete example, we started last time with this elliptic curve over Q. This particular elliptic curve has full two torsion defined over Q. We computed the discriminant and the C4 to calculate what uh, primes might be of bad reduction, uh, possibly two, definitely five are of bad reduction. And we computed the torsion. Um, we computed the torsion with the techniques we had in particular, the injection of torsion into uh, uh, groups of points over finite fields. And though, so we computed that the only torsion that is in the elliptic curve is two torsion. <clears throat> Great. And now applying the two descent, uh, we compute our set S, the infinite primes, the prime dividing two, which is M, and the primes that are bad. So we have infinity two and five, three primes. <clears throat> then we can compute QS2, and QS2 is um, pairs or you know, classes of rational numbers modulo squares. So you can, all the representatives have integer representatives such that the order of vanishing for every prime, not in S, is congruent to zero. So we are just have to see what primes in S could appear. The infinity prime gives you the sign plus or minus one, and then it can be divisible by two or can be divisible by five or can be divisible by two and five. So these are all the classes that can appear in QS2. There are eight elements 
And that right away tells us that, well, then what is the weak model of a group? The two torsion survives the quotient, and then a bunch of copies of Z mod two, one for each uh, member of the rank of the infinite part. So this has to inject into QS2 cross QS2, which has size eight square. So therefore the rank plus two, two copies here, these two is these two copies that come from the torsion is less or equal to six. So the rank is at most four. But now we can use the second part of the two descent to actually narrow down what's happening with the rank. So we're gonna do that. Now <clears throat> here, we're going to apply our homogeneous space uh, is going to be given by, remember, uh, two equations. There is B1, I'm going to apply it already with um, uh, here E1 is zero, E2 is two, and E3 is 10. We had an equation uh, for these uh, spaces and is going to be B1, Z1 squared, minus b2 z2 is square equals to 2 and 2 is the second equation is b1 z1 squared minus b1 b2 z3 is square equals 10. Now uh, you're going to need a, a ruler here. Uh, we're going to uh, write uh, maybe I'm going to make a table here uh, of values of B, so there's going to be values of Bs. On one hand, uh, we have the B1s, and on one hand, I have the, oops, the B2s. Okay. And I have, uh, I can have B1 can be one, two, five, 10, or minus one, minus two, minus five, or minus 10. And B2 similarly can be one, uh, two, five, 10, or minus one, minus two, minus five, and minus 10. Okay. I'm gonna draw some lines uh, as we go along. Okay, um, <clears throat> what do we know? Uh, the pair B1, B2, that is 1, 1, that comes from O. Okay, O always maps to 1, 1. So I'm going to start with uh, that point. There is O, okay. All right. Uh, we also know we have two torsion points and the, the, the map here tells us where the two torsion points go. So you see here P, uh, O goes to one, one. So that, that's why I know that one. And um, when we have T1 or T2, that also tells me where it goes. So you can compute those and check that T1 goes, according to my notes, T1 goes to zero, zero, uh, which is a point on the curve, right? So, uh, zero, zero goes to five minus two. So I'm gonna put it in at five minus two. I'm gonna need some lines already. Uh, here. And I'm gonna put another one going across like this. Whoops, my finger got in the way a little bit. All right, um, uh, five minus two is here. So this, corresponds to T1, which is zero, zero, goes there, okay? Um, I also know that uh, T2, which is two, zero, maps to two minus one, okay? If you do it, uh, this goes here, two, zero goes to two minus one, and T3, the third two torsion point is 10, zero, maps to 10, two. Okay. So those go here. I'm going to do another line here. Now, uh, what we're going to do is start trying to figure out what happens in all the other spaces. <clears throat> and 
what we're going to do is a lot of what we're going to do is work out locally what is happening okay whether there are possibilities for points or not so here um i'm going to write in in red when something goes wrong so what happens with equation one if uh if b1 is negative but b2 is positive so b1 is negative b2 is positive is this region here okay in this region uh what i have is that um, B1 is negative and B2 is positive, but you see that then uh, equation one is a negative number on the left and a positive number on the right. Therefore, it cannot have solutions. One, equation one does not have solution over the real numbers, never mind the rational numbers. So I'm going to put a big fat R here to indicate that over the reals there are no solutions over uh, for equation one therefore all those are gone okay there's nothing here and none of those pairs can actually possibly come from a point or they cannot have points uh, the homogeneous system cannot have points over the rational numbers okay similarly what happens in this region in this region uh, b one is negative and B2 is negative. And in that region, um, B1 times B2 would be positive. And therefore, the same thing happens now with equation two. Now, equation two uh, cannot have solutions over the real numbers. So all these pairs now are also gone from my consideration. What just happened? What just happened is that we lost half of the pairs. Half of the pairs means that now there are what? Four times eight, 32. So now there's two to the five uh, possibilities here, or what I mean is here, uh, the size of this now, we're saying that the size of the possible image is down to two to the five. So the rank plus two is less or equal to five. So the rank is less or equal to three already. We've lost the possibility of another pair of another um, uh, higher rank. So it cannot be rank four. But in fact, we've also lost four spots there. So uh, four spots here that are reserved now for torsion points. So it cannot be, um, well, those actually we, we've already consider from the uh in that equation we already took them into consider into consideration with the r plus two less or equal to five or something so those are uh, accounted for very good what else can we do now we're going to start looking at other uh, spaces so let me consider um uh let me consider what were they going to do the case of one five for example Okay, I'm going to consider this one uh, right here for a moment. The case of one five. So let's let's go here in the example to um, again. The homogeneous space is uh, b one c one square minus b two z two square equals to two, and b one z one squared minus b one b two z cubed squared equals ten. And I'm going to consider the case of B1, B2 equals 1, 5. Okay, so what happens? Uh, the homogeneous space uh, now becomes um, Z1 squared minus 5, Z2 squared equals 2. And Z1 squared minus 5, Z cubed squared equals 10. And I know how to uh, look for, so the first equation, there is a Pell's equation. I know how to figure out whether there's going to be integer, integer points or not in a Pell's equation. And if you know a little bit of that, you might already realize that there is no integer points, but we have to be careful that there is no rational points either. So what we're going to, the problem here is with five. So what we're going to do 
is actually work uh, work over uh, Q5, okay, over the five addicts. Because the problem here is going to be with the five addict valuation. And uh, what happens is that, well, if you know about five addicts, well, we have the valuation, the, five, the P addict valuation satisfies two things. The valuation of X times Y is the valuation of X plus the valuation of Y. The valuation, by the way, is the, the P addict order at five. So how, what's the largest power of five dividing X? Uh, if it is in the denominator, what's the power of five uh, dividing in the denominator? Okay, and uh, the other property is that the valuation of X plus Y is larger than, larger or equal to the minimum of the valuation of X and the valuation of Y um, with equality if those valuations are different. So the first claim that I'm going to uh, say is that uh, Z1 and Z2 are actually five adic integers. Okay. And for that, I'm going to look at equation one and look at the five adic valuation of both sides. So the five adic valuation of Z1 squared minus five Z2 squared equals the five adic valuation of two. The five adic valuation, there's no fives dividing two, so that is zero. And this one, you see um, the five adic valuation um, of, of this guy here is going to be whatever the five adic valuation of Z1S times two. And the five adic valuation of this one is going to be the valuation of Z2 times two plus one. So whatever happens here, the valuation here is odd. And whatever happens here, the valuation is even. So they have different valuations. So in this equation, we are actually always going to have an equality, okay? So this is going to be equal to the minimum of the valuations. I'm going to already pull out uh, of twice the five adic valuation of Z1 and uh, one plus the five adic valuation of Z2 of two times. Excuse me. Two times the five adic valuation of Z2. But if that minimum is going to be zero, if the valuation of Z1 was negative, then the value then the minimum would be negative. If the valuation of Z2 was negative, then one plus twice a negative number would also be negative. So this would be negative if either one is negative. So they both have to be positive or zero, not negative. So the valuations of Z1 and the valuation of Z2 have to be positive. And therefore, uh, they are both five adic integers. Okay. Now, my second claim is that Z3 is also a five adic integer. And it's the same, uh, the same narrative, except that now with equation two, the valuation of Z1 squared minus five Z3 squared is the valuation of 10, which in this case is one. But again, the valuation of each one of the summons, one is odd and the other one is even, so it attains the minimum of uh, twice the valuation of C1 and one plus twice the valuation of C3. And we know the valuation of Z1 is uh, bigger or equal to zero. It's even, so it cannot be one. So the minimum has to be at the second value, um, but the minimum, so it has to be one. So the valuation of Z3 in fact has to be um, um, the zero. So, but in any case, it has to be that the valuation of Z3 is positive. Or uh, not negative, at least. Okay. Um, very good. But then uh, now, 
uh, now we are we're in business because now Z1, Z2, and Z3. So this is done. This claim is done. And now look at equation um, at equation one. Um, from equation one, now I can reduce modulo five. So Z1 and Z2 are in Z5. And uh, I can reduce throughout mod five. And this tells me that Z1 square is congruent to two modulo five. But you see that is impossible because there is now Z1 is an integer or you can just consider it as an integer um, mod five. And uh, there is no square that gives you two. But uh, two is not a square, it's not a quadratic residue uh, mod five, and that gives you a contradiction. Okay. So what we've proved actually, the only thing that mattered here was that um, B1 was not divisible by five and B2 was divisible by five. If you look at the whole proof, so, so if, um, if B1, if five does not divide B1 or and, Uh, five divides B two. Uh, we have the same proof is valid. Okay, um, but so what that tells me, going back to my table, is that we actually have um, that all of these. Let me draw here a line now. And a line here. So now it turns out that all of these where B2 is divisible by five and B1 is not divisible by five, these are going to have issues over the five addicts. So there is no, uh, these do not belong, these do not have rational points, so therefore they cannot come from the weak Mordell Bay group. Can I, ex sorry, can I expand a little one, bit? Oh, one, one more thing is that, the same thing happens here. The negative sign here of B2 doesn't say anything, uh, doesn't change anything. So these are also all vanished um, from the possible solutions. Yes, Ben. Uh, so it, implicit in what we just did. So in showing that if we're working over the five addicts, then uh, these, if there were solutions to the equations, then yeah. they would be five addict integers. Is, yeah. is our conclusion that, okay, so there, there aren't any rational solutions coming from the fact that, that if we wanted rational solutions, then because the five attic solutions would be five attic integers, rational solutions would be integers, and there are no integer solutions. Uh, no, what we've actually, uh, the, the, what we've done is mm -hmm. that um, what, we're, what we're really using is that the rational numbers are inside the five attic numbers. Mm -hmm. uh, and what we've proved is that there are no uh, five attic solutions. Okay. Uh, so that implies, uh, this is bad, but no Q solutions either. Okay. Okay, that so makes sense. We, Thank you. We've actually proved something stronger. It could be that there are five addict solutions, but no rational solutions. But what we've proved is that there is no five addict solutions, which is larger. So there is definitely no rational solutions. Same thing happens in the other uh, in the in these other squares. We've proved something stronger. There are no real solutions at all. Therefore, there are no rational solutions. So what we're doing is looking at completions of Q and proving something in a completion to mm -hmm. deduce something about Q. Yeah, okay. okay, that makes sense, thank you. Yeah, all right, so now- Can I uh, ask, what a, uh, in, the past, yeah. in the past, was this how it was proven 100 years ago? 
What do you mean a hundred years ago? The uh, the more in the Mordell Veil theorem. Um. No, no, I wouldn't. I wouldn't think. I. I I think what we did to prove the weak Mordell Veil theorem was closer to what uh, Mordell did. Um. But. Uh, we. What we are approaching now is a, a much more modern uh, attack on this, which is through cohomology. So this has a lot of flavor already in cohomology, and what we're going to do next is formalize this. And so I think what happens, well, people like uh, Castles were already doing some something like this. This two descent was already in work of Castles much earlier on, um, but. Um, as far as I know, what we're doing is much more modern in that this is an instance now of what we're going to see much more generality of cohomology. Uh, and I think the proof of more though, I have not looked into it myself so closely, but I think it's close closer to what what we did um, about uh, for to to prove the, the Wigmore Delphi theorem and then use the descent theorem. All right, so now what are we going to do? Now we're going to use the fact that the map is a homomorphism, okay? So we are going to, um, so now take, for example, um, um, no, maybe we need, we need to start looking at some, some other points. So now of the blocks that are left, you start looking around and see what you can do. But what I'm going to claim is that once you start looking around enough, you're going to reach these particular square right here. Hold on a second. This one, um, B equals uh, B11, B2 minus one. So, um, so what about this one here? Uh, let's let's look at it. So um, the case of B1, B2 equals one minus one, what equation it gives you, it will give you, um, it gives you the homogeneous space, Z1 squared, B2 is minus one, so plus Z2 is squared equals to two, and uh, Z1 squared and B1 times B2 is, uh, how much? Uh, that's B1 times B2 is minus one. So I get also um, Z3 equals to 10. Is there a solution to this equation? I ask the audience, audience participation. Z1 is one, Z2 is one, Z3 is Three. There you go. So one, one definitely works for the first equation. And if this is one, a nine here works like a charm. So we have a point. Okay. So we find the rational point here. And remember that given, given a point, we have a formula somewhere uh, here. Uh, here it is. That gives us a point on the elliptic curve itself. So, uh, well, there you go. So you can check that this actually gives you a point. So this is going to give me a point, a very easy point to find, mind you, right? We, ben is a very smart guy, but this is not <laughs> a rocket science to find this point. This is actually part of the beauty of descent, that um, the point that this corresponds to the points on the homogeneous spaces have lower height than the points on the elliptic curve themselves. So when you're doing this descent, it's easier to find the points on the homogeneous spaces that is to find points on the elliptic curve. In this case, it's actually not a, not a lot of savings in height. The point that you get if you compute it is one minus three, and that is a point on the elliptic curve, okay? Uh, what happens once I have a point? I can use the fact that the map is a homomorphism. Now, P plus T2 
will be another point. P plus T1 will be another point and so on. So now it's sort of like this spreads in that P plus T1, P plus T1, where does it land? It has to land on one minus one times five minus two. So that has to land on five, two. Okay, and there you go. It turns out that if you compute P plus T1, that point is 2060 on the elliptic curve. And if you compute what pair that lands onto, it lands on 5, 2. Similarly, P plus T2 lands here. And P plus T2 lands on 18 minus 48 is a rational point. And uh, P plus T3 uh, lands here. And that is another rational point. And this point is 10 over 9 minus 80, 27. Okay, some more audience participation. Is P a torsion point and reasons why or why not? Can P be a torsion point? So here's two reasons why P cannot be a torsion point. First of all, we computed the torsion last time and the torsion was just two torsion. And we already had marked all the two torsion in the chart. It was T1, T2, and T3. So P is not a two torsion point. And second, P plus T3, the equation had integer coefficients. So our equation was with integer coefficient and P plus T3 has a nine in the denominator of the X coordinate. And that goes against what we proved over local fields that at most there can be a four and an eight in the denominators of the X and the Y coordinate for a torsion point. In the form that the the formula that was given, actually, you cannot have that either. And uh, so the fact that there's a denominator there tells you that this P plus T3 is not torsion, and therefore P is not torsion either. So P is an infinite point, okay, of, of infinite order. So now the rank is at least one. And we have not a lot of squares left to fill out, but we're gonna continue and, and move along. So, um, we can do more now that we have the fact that uh, we have a bunch of, of points. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to multiply, um, for example, uh, five well, or one five, this square here, multiply one five by five two. What do you get? One five times five two, that is uh, one, five and five two that's uh five ten okay so i'm talking about the pair five ten here what is that going to be one five is not an image five two is in the image if this was also in the image of the map then these would have to be in the image but it's not so this has to be not in the image okay so uh, this one actually is gone by multiplication of this region by five two. So actually, if you uh, if you mark this whole region, well, that's a terrible star. Um, let's let's mark it as a star and multiply a star by the pair of five two. Then actually, you translate the Q five ness badness of that whole region into this one. The fact that the star region is not in the image times five two, it gives you that this whole region is not in the image. And similarly, if you uh, if you put like uh, maybe a little heart here and multiply a little heart by five two, then I believe one minus five will land in five minus 10. So it would land here, for example, and it 
carries out that these ones cannot be in the image either. Okay. And you can keep going in this um, in this way, and I can tell you that actually uh, with five attic con um, contradictions, you can prove that this space cannot have points, that this space cannot have points, that this space cannot have points, this space cannot have points. Nope, 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 and nope. Okay. And we've completed the descent in that I've analyzed all the possibilities for the homogeneous spaces, and I know where everything could land. The only uh, survivors here are uh, these pairs. By the way, you can check that the pairs B1, B2 that I'm marking form a multiplicative subgroup of QS2 cross QS2. Okay, because it's the image of the map, and it, that's that's a strong condition that also could have like once I had blocked out enough corners, I could have said like that said by all the reasonings. Okay, so <clears throat> then what happens? What we concluded is <clears throat> that uh, there is one. Um, so the conclusion of all this is that um, um, well that modulo two that this is isomorphic to Z mod two plus Z mod two coming from two torsion plus one more Z mod two coming from um, from the rank. Okay. So that implies I'm not claiming that that point one minus three is a generator quite yet, but that this is isomorphic to Z mod two plus Z mod two plus Z. And the rank is one. Okay. Um, now, what we said last time is that now that I have one uh, I have one representative, <clears throat> so one representative of um, one representative of that class in the Mordell Vey group is the point p one comma minus three. So you can do I I have not explained this, but you can do a, a height uh, consideration on what's happening to figure out if there are other points. Uh, that could be the rank is one. So if P is not a generator, then P is a multiple of a generator. But because of the canonical height, then the canonical height has to be forcefully lower than this one. So you can do a search for you can compute the canonical height of this and search if there are points of lower canonical height and conclude that this is a generator. So um, so it turns out that this is uh, equal to um, the subgroup generated by zero zero, which is of two torsion. Um, the point, um, for example, uh, two zero, which is of two torsion, and the point one minus three, which is of infinite order. And that is a set of generators for your elliptic curve. But um, okay, so we've computed a full Mordell Vey group. Uh, using the uh, complete two descent. Very good. There you go. Okay, so um, next I'm going to stop here and I'm going to start talking about putting all this in much more uh, generality in terms of the Sommer group and the Shah. <clears throat>